Hi everyone, welcome back to Baby Bump Life. I wanted to take some time though, since I uh, have a few seconds to keep going on with our um, hospital series for you guys. And I want to start with, um, for this episode, going over baby friendly. Now I know that I have talked about that before and what, um, baby friendly means. I know I've put a blog up on my website. If you haven't checked out my website, check it out, babybumplife.com, um, where I have a couple blogs on there as well. I'm not as religious about um, getting stuff up on there, but I'm going to try and be a little bit better. Um, I have worked at baby friendly hospitals, and then I've worked not at baby friendly hospitals, and honestly, there's benefits in both. I do like working at a baby-friendly hospital better um, just because I like the benefits um, that it has. Now, not everybody does, so that's why I wanted to create this video for you so that you understood um, the differences. Baby-friendly is basically um, a little a certificate or a covering that your hospital has and um, Baby Friendly is a global initiative that was started by the World Health Organization and um, started by uh, the United Children's Fund um, around the 90s. So we've had goals of um, throughout the US of continuing um, to make baby friendly hospitals and to get uh, more and more baby friendly hospitals in the US. Um, that's the like short version of it, okay? The um, mission and the vision of uh, Baby Friendly USA uh, is on my website. I put that on my blog, so um, again, head over to babybumplife.com to check that out. But um, there are 10 different initiatives that a hospital must um, stand by or follow in order to be baby friendly and that's what I feel is most important for you guys to know about um, and what we're going to go over here really quick. Um, the first one maybe doesn't really apply to you guys but um, they have to have a written breastfeeding policy and routinely communicate um, with all of the healthcare staff about breastfeeding. So I will say that at the um, baby friendly hospitals the nurses um, it just you know uh, an observation that I have seen, they are more willing to help with breastfeeding because they are educated more on the subject versus other hospitals where I have worked at and um, nurses are like, oh, I don't know, baby's not latching, you know, the lactation consultant isn't here right now, here's some formula. And um, it could have been an issue that could have been resolved. So I will say um, that working at a baby friendly hospital and having those breastfeeding policies uh, I think does really benefit the moms uh, that are planning on exclusively breastfeeding. The second thing is uh, train all healthcare staff in the skills necessary to implement this policy. So um, that kind of goes back with the education I talked to you about. Inform all pregnant women about the benefits and management of breastfeeding. Um, that is something that in baby-friendly hospitals they are taught as well, um, is that we need to educate all of the moms here and let them know about um, the benefits of breastfeeding. Even if they're choosing not to do that, we need to let them know of the benefits so that they're making an educated decision on if they want to breastfeed or bottle feed. Fourth one is helping mothers initiate breastfeeding within one hour of birth. I think I've talked about this before, but if not, um, so helping moms to initiate breastfeeding in one hour is so important because that is when babies are most awake, most alert, and that's the best time to get them latched on. Uh, otherwise, after that first hour, they call it the golden hour, these babies go into sleepy-like states and it's very hard to arouse them and get them want to, to want to eat because they're really tired, they're exhausted. They just went through this um, big experience uh, coming into this world and it can be really hard to get them to latch on because breastfeeding is a lot of work for both mom and baby and if babies aren't put on right away sometimes it can be a little harder so we do try to get baby on within one hour of birth 
unless there are complications such as baby had to go to the NICU or complications with the mom. Otherwise, in baby-friendly hospitals, they are trying to get um, the babies latched on within one hour of birth. So the fifth thing is uh, to show mothers how to breastfeed and how to maintain lactation even if they're separated from their infants. So like I just said, if uh, the babies can't get on to the breast within that first hour, then the next part of being a baby from the hospital, that next um, goal is to show moms how to uh, maintain lactation, basically how to pump and uh, get and keep up a supply so that they can give that to baby if they are separated for any reason. The sixth thing is give infants no food or drink other than breast milk, breast milk <laughs> unless medically necessary. Now if it is mom's choice that's kind of a different story but um, it gets kind of tricky with uh, the baby friendly guidelines and what they're recommending. Now I don't think at a baby from the hospital they're gonna say no you can't have formula because you're not you know I, I don't I just don't see that happening but um, the thought process behind it is that if babies are starting to get formula sometimes that can confuse them um, if that is flowing in too fast with the bottle so I know it is always good to use if they have to have formula um, medically or maybe mom is just like literally exhausted from the delivery and can't breastfeed at that moment whatever it may be if the baby has to have formula um, to do a slow flow nipple that way baby um, won't be um, become lazy later when it's time to breastfeed and it's hard work um, they will be able to kind of work they're used to it because those slow flow nipples make them have to work a little bit in order to get um, the milk that they need so it's kind of it makes it a little more similar to breastfeeding um, the seventh thing is practicing rooming in allowing mothers and infants to remain together 24 hours a day now this is important when choosing a hospital because I can tell you from working at a baby friendly and then not at a baby friendly hospital, I've seen a lot of moms who um, like at a baby friendly hospital, they're like, okay, can you take the baby to the nursery? I wanna get some sleep. Baby friendly hospitals, there is no nursery. Baby is in the room with you 24 hours. This is your baby, congratulations. <laughs> And, and I know that is hard on some moms, again, who have gone through extensive labors or maybe they were a long induction and ended up with a C-section or whatever it may be. Um, I know that can be really, really hard. So that is something to consider if you're deciding between two hospitals and um, you know that that's something that you want. Now on the opposite end, um, there are moms who are like, good. I don't want my baby to go to a nursery. I want my baby to stay with me 24 hours a day and, and that's it. So, you know, it kind of goes both ways. I'm just telling you what happens just so you know the two, um, you know, the different sides of it and you can decide what works best for you. Um, the reason they do the 24 hour rooming in is that way um, because we are recommending exclusively breastfeeding. That way if baby, um, you know, is giving signs of being hungry, putting their hands to their mouth, um, smacking their lips or whatever. That way you can get baby to latch on right away and it doesn't have to be the nursery nurse recognizes the signs in baby and then has to get the baby all swaddled up, bring them through the hallway, bring them to mom and by this point they might be crying and mad and hard to latch on. So it just, um, it kind of helps with that overall thought of breastfeeding um, exclusively. With that all kind of being said, number eight is encouraging breastfeeding on demand. So by keeping them in the room with you, that helps, is one thing that helps to encourage breastfeeding on demand. Now, why is it important to breastfeed on demand? Especially in the first few hours and days, the more they are latching on and breastfeeding on demand, meaning you're not giving them a time frame. You're just putting them on and letting them um, breastfeed when they're giving you signs like putting their hands to their mouth, smacking their lips, maybe like turning their head and rooting a little bit. Um, all of those things help to make your milk supply uh, 
increased even more so that when your mature milk comes in, which is usually day three or four, um, you'll have a greater supply. So think of it as baby putting in an order. So the more that they're latching on in the beginning, the more is gonna help with your milk supply later. Um, just to give you an example, I know my sweet Hugo came out starving you would have thought but he was nine too so he was a hungry guy um i never gave him formula until he was almost seven months old and in the hospital i kind of i almost broke down for a second i know i've talked about this before but um i stayed strong and i was like no i really want to exclusively breastfeed this is what i want so um i just kept putting him on and for a while it was like every hour he wanted to feed he wanted to feed he wanted to feed and then he would give me a little bit of a stretch so they call that cluster feeding so when you're feeding them on demand they may eat every hour for a little while and then they'll stretch out and sleep for for like four hours so they'll give you that little bit of a break um, but feeding on demand they found unless um, there's a medical reason if baby is jaundice or baby um, has any other complications and the pediatrician tells you your baby needs to eat um, at a certain time frame then you kind of throw that eating on demand thing out the window and you listen to the um, pediatrician's orders but um, otherwise, that feeding on demand is really good, um, both for baby and them learning how to eat and for your supply as well. Okay, we're almost there. <laughs> the ninth thing is no pacifiers or artificial nipples um, to breastfeeding infants. So, um, no pacifiers at, at baby-friendly hospitals, they cannot give pacifiers out. But that's important to know because if you are planning on giving your baby a pacifier, um, you want to make sure you put that in your bag and bring it with you to the hospital if you are planning on delivering at a baby-friendly hospital. Um, the other thing is, if there is a need for a nipple shield, the um, the nurses can't just give it to you. You have to be assessed by a lactation consultant and then they can be the ones um, that would determine if you need that medically necessary or not. Just know that um, by, you know, if you deliver at a baby friendly hospital by them saying, no, you can't have, you know, a nipple shield or a pacifier. It's not, they're not trying to be mean. It's not that they don't um, have them, you know, uh, stocked or anything. It's just that literally they can't as a baby friendly hospital. So. And then finally, number 10, foster the establishment of breastfeeding support groups and refer moms um, to them on discharge from the hospital to the birth center. So basically they just want to make sure that moms are aware of breastfeeding support groups or uh, help that they can get outside of the hospital. Breastfeeding support groups are so important. I know um, I've been a nurse for 10 years before I had my baby and a lactation nurse for um, almost three years before I had my baby and I know I, I knew a lot about this subject and I thought breastfeeding was really really hard it is important um, and that's another uh, initiative of the baby friendly hospitals is to help moms get in contact with other um, moms and lactation consultants that can help them and i hope you guys know as well if you have any questions about breastfeeding um, or anything you know childbirth or postpartum related please 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 leave your comments if you don't feel like leaving a comment um, feel free to email me and i will get back with you because my whole hope of creating this channel is to get the education out there the correct education out there and to help new moms and to be um, a support group a virtual support group online um, and just to help one another that's the 10 initiatives for a baby friendly hospital and i hope that helps you guys with um kind of in your process of choosing a hospital as well. Stay tuned for more of my um, hospital series here. And then um, I have a couple other series coming up. So just stay tuned guys. I've got a lot of great information for you and leave your comments below. I'll talk to you all very soon. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.